I saw the way it was when it was newly purchased and right now to see where it is. This is the work of the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. You know, some people, they are not happy and I pray they will be happy because when they are not happy, because God, the devil is making them unhappy. When people do well and you appreciate them, they are not happy. They are not happy because they are not doing well themselves. Praise God. And I want to say that every work you see in this place, not a single cent from the church was put into it. They spent everything by themselves. Again, not because we don't have money, but this is just the kind of family that they Ah, and the wife is always supporting. When it is God, uh, they are ready to go all the way. And God is ready to go all the way for your family. And we'll bless you all in Jesus' name. And so we are going to be dedicating this place to God. But we'll do that after the message. Are we together? Praise God. And this... We bless the Lord for you. Your services time is almost over, but you will endure with us today. Over here in Bo, we are making adjustments to the services also. And so everybody will endure together and then we'll enjoy together. Praise the Lord. And God will use you also. Some people just miss that one. God will use me also. Amen. It is time for the word. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful unto you. Eternal God, we appreciate you. Because you are the great builder, the master builder, that builds this beyond the imagination of humanity. We thank you because you are not only just building your church, you are building our lives. You are building our homes and families. And you have ordained that men should be co-builders together with you. Help us, Lord, that as we look into the subject of building today, we will be effective, progressive, visionary, faithful, honorable builders with you in Jesus' name. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. You may have your seats. I'll be looking at the subject of building together with Christ. Building together with Christ. And I must confess to you, I preach this message in different places. But every time the topic comes, it comes in a fresh and a new way. With new inspiration and new insights. And so, if you have it many years back and you're hearing it again, and you compare the notes, you'll see that there are two different things. You may get the topic, but it is a revelation from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Many years ago, some years ago, I was in Israel, and then there was a particular place, I won't get too much into the story of that, we got into where Jesus made the statement that we have written or penned down in the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And that resonated well with me. Every time I get to that in the Bible, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, and it says unto them, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against this. There is a story behind the statement. There are things that happened before the statement was made. There were authorities and powers and rulers and gods were they in that area. And people were thinking this is this power, that is that power, this is this, that is that. And Jesus got there. That is why he asked the question, who do men say that I am? 
Because people are confused. And people give answer here and there. And Peter said, thou art Christ. Christ the rock. The foundation of our life. The hope of our life. The source of our life. And Jesus said, you are Peter upon this rock. Of course, it's a rocky place. And you know, Jesus typifies things quite a lot. He spoke in parable quite a lot. And you know that there is a difference between the sand, the ground, and a rock. And he said, upon this rock of truth, upon this rock of revelation, I'll build my church. Flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. Upon this truth, I'll build my church. And I'm here to tell you today that God is still building his church. And it's building your life in Jesus' name. You know, some people, they don't understand when the Bible talks about the church and they look at the four walls of the church and they look at the decorations of the church and they look at the beauty and the glamour of the church and then they think that's what Jesus is talking about. No, you are wrong. The building is not the church. The church is the congregation of people that have been called out of the world, called out of sin, called out of darkness into the marvelous light of the Lord, they are the church. They are the congregation of people, you, 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 me, all of us together, that are now serving the Lord in truth and in spirit. That is a church. It's a congregation of people that have repented of their sins, renounced their sins, and received Christ into their heart as their personal Lord and Savior, that is a church. It's a congregation of people that are dead to sin and now alive in Christ Jesus, that is a church. It's a congregation of people that are on their onward march to the kingdom of God, that is a church. And uh, that there means that if you come to church, and you are not saved. You come to church, you are not born again. You come to church, but you're still living in sin. You come to church, and then you're still in the world, like we had earlier this morning, and um, you think you're part of the church. I regret to tell you that you are none of Christ. You are not part of the church. And when he says, I will build my church, he's talking about building his people. He's talking about blessing his people. He's talking about showcasing his people. Glorifying himself through his people upon this rock of truth. People living by the truth. Because Christ is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father except by me. Those that are in the truth, that the ones he's talking about building, may he build your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. May you be wise in Jesus' name. Which built his house upon a rock. You see the word rock there again. And the rain descended and the floors came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, disobedient people, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of that house. Pay attention here. The Bible is telling us that both the house that was built upon the rock and the house that was built upon the sand were both experiencing the wind, the fiercest of winds, and the uh, and the storms of life, uh, and uh, everything will be shaking. But what will make the difference is this. The house on the rock will stand, and the one on the, uh, on the sand will collapse. May your life not collapse. May your ministry not collapse. May your family not collapse. May your career not collapse. Everything you have spent your life on building, you know, there are people like that, that they wasted time, they wasted energy, they wasted resources, and they built everything only at the end of the day for everything to crumble. Your life will not crumble. 
in the name of Jesus. But on the basis of your obedience, you know the first sin of man is disobedience. Uh, and God is saying, if you will obey the Lord uh, and do all that is commanded in his world, then will all these blessings uh, come, you, come upon you and then overtake you. So the word of God is telling us, if we are going to be built, we've got to learn to obey. To obey. Whosoever that hear it, these sayings of mine. And the hearing this time around is talking about hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. And uh, it says, not just hear it, but do it then. Do it then. If you come to church every day of your life, and you spend your money in the church, and we say, we are building, we are building, we are building. But then your life is not right with God. Your family is not right with God. You are one thing here, you are another thing here. I told you earlier this morning, there are people that are living a duplicit life. They are double-faced people. And may I say this, I thank God for those of you that give your life to Christ after the first humbling I did. Let's put our hands together for them again. And those of you, maybe you're not just giving your life to Christ, you're just reconsecrating yourself, your life unto the Lord. You felt the touch and the, and, the, and the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and you responded to that call. I bless the Lord for that. And I want to tell you, it's not just something that happens here, it's something that you must continue living your life in Christ. Living for his glory. First Corinthians chapter 3. I look at it from verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse what? Verse 10 to 11. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For all the foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The foundation of holiness is Jesus. The foundation of righteousness is Jesus. The foundation of purity is Jesus. The foundation of uprightness is Jesus that is the foundation upon which this church is built. Building a church requires architectural building. I mean, sorry, uh, requires arch uh, architectural blueprint. Amen? Any failure or departure from the blueprint will lead to a colossal defect and possible collapse of that building. So as we build together deeper life, you know, uh, many years back, 1996 to be preserved, I was posted from New York to Atlanta, Georgia, and I was there for seven years before I came to Washington. When I got to that church, deeper life, so called, there are a lot of things I saw in the church that doesn't look deeper life. There are a lot of things they were doing that doesn't look deep alive. There are some attitudes and behaviors that doesn't look deep alive. And when I say deep alive, I'm not just talking about deep alive as a church. I'm talking about deep alive in Christ. I need an amen there. Amen? And they've been ongoing for years before I got there. And we had to start from the scratch. The basis of salvation. And before I got there, pay attention here. Because we're talking about building together with Christ. If you are going to build, you build according to his will, according to his word, according to his way. And you're not even building for deeper light Bible church. You're building for him. I need an amen. I got to know before I got there, there were people in the church that when prayer is going on or singing is going on, they just go into the spirit and they start, wah, 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 and they start prophesying. I'm falling on the ground like they do in some other churches. You know some of those churches? Or oh, you don't know some of those churches? You do? All right. Some of you have been there before. 
And whatsoever you got from that place, you don't bring them here. Praise the Lord. Because that is not the Bible. I need an amen. Before I got there, I was told that every pastor that had come before me will have a bottle of oil on the altar. Always anointing people. Amen. Well, with all of those, they were fighting, they were quarreling, there were all kinds of things going on. And I said, this is not the church of Christ. Amen. And we started building. And some of them took offense and they left. Pay attention here. There are some people that it's good for them to leave. For God to do his work. If I were to be in some places saying that, they would say amen. Maybe I'm already stepping on Bowie toes. Am I stepping on your toes already? Are you ready for the truth? You invited me here now. Praise God. Uh, even though I'm the overseer, I don't go to locations. If they don't invite me, I stay where I am. But if you invite me, amen, you want the truth. Ask your neighbor, do you want the truth? I give you an answer now. And tell him you will get it today. And you'll be blessed with it. In the name of Jesus. To quote a long story short, we began to lay foundation upon foundation in that place. And God began to build this church. And uh, today we have many churches in the city of Georgia today. And we raise many pastors. Praise the Lord. But on the basis of the truth. For many years they were just in one place. And all conferences were happening. They couldn't move forward. This church will move forward. In the name of Jesus. Because it's going to be built upon the blueprint of the Holy Spirit. You know, the members of the choir, they sang to us, come Holy Spirit, revive our church today. Revive our church today. So, if anything therein in us is dying, the power of the living God will bring revival in Jesus' name. And the choir from the headquarters church, they sang to us, they said, there is victory ahead. Ahead of your life. Ahead of your family. Ahead of your ministry. There is victory ahead and you will not miss it in Jesus' name. First Corinthians again, chapter 3, verse 10. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandmen or husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. Building requires a solid foundation. Any structure built upon the sand or faulty structure will not stand the test of time. Amen. Especially when the wind blows and the floors of, and storms of life come. Building requires training by licensed builders. Licensed builders. Otherwise, lack of professionalism will damn that structure. Building requires patience. There are people that just want to run the church. They are impatient. People came to church, they don't know about their life, they don't know about their past, they don't know about everything, and they want to just spark them. Walk, walk, walk. Activity is not righteousness. Don't put the cart before the horse. Amen? Let them sit down. Hear the word of God. You know, over there in the Philippines, um, I won't talk too much because uh, uh, they get into our side listen to the message but there is a particular person highly pleased person that came to church and the uh, first day in church wanted to be part of the workforce and i said uh -uh. as a matter of fact today uh somebody is supposed to minister but i said no don't worry i will handle it myself because with my absence that person is so strong and whatever that we want to lord herself, lady by the way, over that individual. I said, uh, just sit down, praise the Lord. No matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself, whether they are men of power, of position, the word of God stands. I said the word of God stands. And God will keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. So building requires patience. 
So don't just put all the blocks on top of one another one day. It's going to collapse. So when people come, let them sit down, line upon line, precept upon precept. That is why and how we build together with Christ Jesus. Anybody then wanting to serve must be ready to submit his or her life, surrender his or her life unto God. The Christian service is that of absolute surrenderedness and total sacrifice. Building requires step by step periodic evaluation. What I'm saying is, everyone that comes to church, you know, I could just come here and say, oh, celebration, celebration. We're not celebrating this world. We want to celebrate your life. I say I want to celebrate your life and the progress you are making in the Lord. So, building requires investment of time, investment of treasure, investment of your talent. Anyone wanting to serve must be ready to surrender everything to the Lord. And that will be step by step. Step by step. You know, in the normal regular building, uh, when the building is going on, at foundation level, when you do your foundation, the building inspectors, they come and inspect that foundation to be sure everything is fine. Amen? I know in Africa, they, nobody inspect anything. <laughs> Amen. And that's where many structures are collapsing every time. But over here, at foundation level, they do inspection. When you put your, bro your blocks and uh, your pillar, the straws and uh, everything, they come, they do inspection. When the electrician comes and starts the work, before they close up everything, they call it the rough in. They come, they do inspection. When you get to the roofing level, they do inspection. The plumbing before the final stage, they do inspection. And that is why over here, you see houses that have been around for 100 years and they are still standing. Because the right work was done. The same thing with our faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. We read it earlier on. Examine yourself to see whether ye still be in the faith. Know ye not your own selves, except ye be reprobate. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We're looking at three points. Number one, personal building for profitable labor. Personal building for profitable labor. Number two, prioritize Prioritize burden for passionate labor. Prioritized burden for passionate labor. And finally, praise of beloved productive laborer. The praise of productive, uh, the praise of beloved productive laborer. When you do things right, your boss will be happy with you. Am I right? Amen. When you are productive, your boss will be happy with you. Let's quickly come to the first point. Personal building for profitable labor. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, he hath built which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. I tell you already, the need for self-examination every step of the way. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, this thing said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works. And I, 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 I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. You will not be living dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. 
Look at verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write. Now, you're going to compare the first three verses. What was written to the church in Sardis and now to the church in Philadelphia. Verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write. This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee an open door, and no man can shut it and in thine amen. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, obedience, and hast not denied my name, faithfulness. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. We say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of what? Temptation of trial, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that past which thou hast, that no man, that no woman, that no ministry, that no position, that no power, take your crown. May the Lord keep you in Jesus' name. The church in Sardis, they brag themselves, they boast themselves. We have the name, we have the place, we have the position, we are rich, we can do this and that. And God said, yes, you seem to be living, but before me, you are dead. Your record is wiped out. May our record not be wiped out before God in Jesus' name. But for the church in Philadelphia, the Lord looked at them and said, you are doing the right thing. Keep it up. Yes, you have a little strength. You have challenges, I will see you through. May the Lord see you through in Jesus' name. So then, what should be your concern as an individual? You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, that's come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest. Sinners are in trouble. Sinners are under oppression. Sinners are under affliction. And the Lord wants to deliver you from the power of darkness. Not that alone. When you build yourself again, I tell you again, you examine yourself. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. You want to look at yourself, look at your life, look at your behaviors, your conduct, your character, your relationship, and everything you do, if any man be in Christ. Am I really in Christ? Old things are passed away. What are the things that were there in my life before that I said there right now? What are the things that I used to do? I knew that they are bad myself. Are they still there or they are passed away? The way I use my tongue, is it still like that? The anger, the bitterness, the malice, are they still there? The pride, the selfishness, and the self-centeredness, are they still there? The lying and the stealing, are they still there? The Lord is calling you, calling everyone unto repentance. And so I submit to you. If you still tell lies, you steal, you fight, you defraud, you deceive others, you, you flex, you are immoral. You watch pornography or adopt movie. You are none of his. You are not a member of the body of Christ. If you do anything in the church, maybe you give your money to the church. Maybe you help in cleaning the church. Maybe you help in taking care of children. Maybe you help in the media department. Maybe you help on the keyboard. Maybe you help teaching. All your effort and labor is in vain because you are not a co-builder together with Christ, uh, if you are see if you if you molest women and you molest children and you are rebellious and stubborn and uh, you are disobedient and uh, you dishonor or disregard authority, the Lord is saying you are not a co-builder together with Him. And maybe you know some people they do it because of their social status. 
because of their power, because of their money, because of their connection with some people in some places, or maybe you are a witch or a wizard, or you are demonic. Do you know there are witches in the church? I said, do you know there are witches in the church? Amen? You know, some ignorant people, they say, there is a witch in this church, and then they pack their look, they run. They go to the other church, and then they go there, and then they meet the grandmaster. <laughs> Praise the Lord of the witches and the wizard. Praise God. And then they say, ha -ha. join up. Oh, yes, you are dead. And then you are praying. And then you are praying. Praise the Lord. For the real child of God. Somebody say amen. Behold, I give unto you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the parts of the enemy. And nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. If you say you are a Christian and you are running helter, skelter, from pillar to post, from pastor to prophet, from prophet to priest, from priest to pope. I have a bad news for you. You will end up running to the pits. You will die before your time. Connect with the God of power. The one that can build your life. And make you victorious. Over principalities and power. And the forces of darkness. Amen. Don't you know. He said this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name you will cast out devils and demons. Why then are you afraid of devils and demons? When you are supposed to have the authority, the control, and the power over them and cast them out and take control. Somebody say take control. Man. Jesus said the works I do you will do. And greater works than this you will do because I go to my father. Jesus is no more here but you are here. Hello, somebody. I said you are here. I said you are here. When I confront problems, I look beyond the problem. Amen? And that's why some people have come and said, Pastor, you're going through this, and you're still able to do this, you're still able to do, still able to do that, because my life is not going to be determined by the plans of the devil. Amen. He said, I hold you in the palm of, his, of my hand. Praise the Lord. I look beyond the problem. I look beyond the mountain and I lift up my eyes. For the Bible says I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help comes. So, how then shall I depend on Motama for help? He will help you. Come to someone and say, God will help you. Amen. The devil wants to destroy your life. If you have heard me say this before, I said, uh, let me see how I normally put this. Uh, um, God made, no, God formed. Satan came and deformed. Religion came and reformed. But Jesus came and transformed. Your life will be transformed in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling every one of us to a new life in Christ Jesus. If there is any kind of sin in your life, if you are demonic, if you are diabolic, repent of it. Repent of it. If you still go consulting with mediums, you're consulting with people of the night. You go to stargazers. You go to palm readers. And then you come to church on Sunday. And then you sing Amazing Grace. You have no part in the kingdom of God. Amen? I know there are pastors that go to Egypt for help to run the church. Amen. Again, I want to say, 
in many churches today, morality has taken over. And yet, no immoral man or woman will enter the kingdom of God. So, if you are there, you still defraud. Maybe you don't defraud those ordinary people, you defraud the government. And some of you, you know, this is December. Somebody say, welcome December. Because we are happy the year is over, January is going to come. And uh, when January comes, what begins to happen in January? Tax season. And you are looking for a fraudulent accountant that will connive with you to defraud the government because you want the refund you are not qualified for. When you get caught, I will not come to visit you in jail. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. If you are born again, Amen. You know, again, let's come back to that uh, Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then your your look. When they look at you, they they are wondering, is this Mrs. Jezebel or 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 Mr. Ahab? They don't know the difference because your life, your look, your action, your behavior has not changed. Everything must change in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you are still selfish and self-centered, God is calling you to a life of consecration, commitment, submission to the King of glory. So then what do you do? There must be clear conviction of sin. There must be convincing conversion unto God. There must be um, a consistent cooperation with God. You keep working with God. Remember, I told you, we are co-builders together with God. There must be calculated carefulness. 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 Uh, I think it was in Kingston during the convention, if I, if I remember. But I think it was Kingston. Well, no. Yeah, can't stay, but not convention during the couple's retreat. And I was telling people, and those of you that have been around me for many years, you know, I don't allow any woman to cook for me. Amen? Praise the Lord. I don't go to anybody's house to eat. Amen? If I'm very, very hungry, instead of coming to your house to eat, I know that uh, the fast food is deadly. Are you with me? I would rather go for that deadly food, eat it, amen, than coming to ruin my life with anyone. Praise the Lord. Some pastors are gluttons. They eat anywhere, anyhow, any, uh, everywhere. Praise the Lord. Live a disciplined life. What did I just say? And yet, and yet, of course, you all know I am friend to everybody, laugh with everybody, smile with everybody, hug everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But to keep your life, you make a calculated effort to be careful the way you do the things you do. You are not careless with your life. You are not careless with ladies. You are not careless with men whether on your job or in the church. And then you make a constant consultation. We call it counseling, guidance, amen, from time to time. There must be a convincing confirmation of godly living and a concert, concerted creation of a godly family. The Lord will build our homes and families in Jesus' name. I get to the second point, prioritize burden for passionate labor. Now you are born again. Now you are saved. Now you have your name in the book of life. Now you are on your way to heaven. Pay attention here. Salvation, holiness, and righteousness will get you to heaven. Amen? But, Righteous labor, sacrificial labor, 
will get you into mansion in heaven. Praise the Lord. Because at the end of the day after the rapture, we're all good together before the feet of the Lord for what is called the Mary Supper of the Lamb. And then your labor, my labor, our labor together. And when God sees it, you serve me all your life. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me also. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you will be also. May you end up in glory with Christ Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Prioritize burden. Your burden is not to have any other God in you. You make that the priority of your life. Because a lot of things want to compete with your faith. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 says, Thou which I have no other gods before me. Some have the God of money, the God of business, the God of family, the God of pride, the God of position, the God of power. Some, the God of preaching. They would do anything possible to preach. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the other and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Amen? Priority. Holiness must be our priority. As a church, and as a pastor, what we preach, what we teach, what we do must be based on that foundation of holiness and righteousness and purity. And that's part of why this is called Deeper Life Bible Church. Initially, it was called Deeper Christian Life. Deeper Christian Life. A life, a Christian life that is deep in Christ, not a shallow life. Not a surface life. Not a common life. Amen? Listen to me. Big fishes are never found in shallow waters. What did I say? They are never found in shallow waters. You go to the deep sea. The deep sea. You want God to really use you, you go deeper. In the word of God, deeper. In consecration, deeper. In commitment, deeper. In the love of God, deeper. In the service of the Lord, deeper. In your relationship with the Lord. Deeper in prayer. Deeper in prayer. Deeper in prayer. Priority. John chapter 4, verse 36 tells us that say ye not that are yet four months and then comes the harvest. It says, behold, look on the field. They are white already for harvest. God wants to use you. Amen. I know today we look this many, some of, some guests are here today, some came from other locations. Uh, but even with that, you still see many empty chairs. And you are going to say, God, use me. To build your church, to populate your church. The Bible says, He that winneth soul is wise. Lord, make me to be a wise man. And he will help you in Jesus' name. One of my favorite, I have a lot of favorite songs. And one of them is, Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there is a war that I can do. Even though it humbles, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the price be great, I'll walk for you. If you know it, you sing with me, right? One, two, three, go. Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there is a work that I can do. Even though it humbles Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the price be great, I walk for you. 
when you are ready to serve the Lord, he will be ready to invest into you in Jesus' name. Amen? So you make evangelism your priority. Go ye dear point to all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all things that I have commanded you. He said, Behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Pay attention here. The Great Commission, by my definition, is a going commission. It's a going commission. It's not a stagnant commission. Amen? You know, Pastor was talking about us having 60 churches. Actually, as of now, it's actually 76 churches. And those of you you know, I put somebody there in the church and then go to that place, knew nobody, break new ground. Because he said, go. And he said, I will be with you. Am I communicating? Just uh, six months ago, I went to the Philippines. I knew nobody in the Philippines. No single person over there. Right now, we started it. We started going from one place to the other, going to the mosque, going to the street, going to the bus. Praise the Lord. And as we speak, if everybody comes, we're already more than 100. Those of you with me in Washington, uh, the church, divided church, you have been in the church for 20 years. You have been in the church for 15 years. You have been in the church for how many years? Amen? All that you have learned is enough. Nobody goes to learn a trade without graduating. Get out. Amen? That's why I push many of them out. Get out there. Praise God. I think yesterday we were talking, and then you say, Pastor, I've been to uh, Annapolis, I've been to Laurel, and then come to Washington. Amen? Praise the Lord. Be an evangelist. You don't even need anybody to give you the title of an evangelist. Because by virtue of your relationship with Christ, you are already an evangelist. Somebody say amen to that. You praise the Lord with your life. You praise the Lord with your, with, with, with your talent. You praise the Lord with your treasure. You praise the Lord with your strength. You when we say praise the Lord, it's not just come, sing, come, and, come in and singing and say, sing hallelujah, amen, amen. All those are good. Praise the Lord. But you praise the Lord with your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I love this lady. Amen. She's still very young. Mama Wachiko. Praise the Lord. Amen. When she was with us in Washington, before she came over to Bowie, every now and then, with her age, herself and the husband, you know, Papa is, uh, is getting younger. Put your hands together for Papa. Amen. They will go invite people. Do everything. Bring them to church. They may not be able to do that much now because of, by the reason of age. But when the opportunity was there, they served the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my life, with my strength. I will praise the Lord no matter what tomorrow brings or what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. It's not just coming to church to sing, brethren. It's laboring for the sake of eternity. Laboring. That's what I really call praising God. You know I sing, so I'm not condemned those of you that sing. Praise God. But I want to be wise. I want my life to count for Jesus. All wants their life to count for something. What will your life count for? 
Let me tell you something. Those of you that think you are working for your pastor, you miss the point. Amen? You missed the point. I have never for one day thought I am working for my general superintendent. I'm not working for him. He's not here with me. There is nothing for me to do to make him feel, oh, I'm doing something. Are you with me? Not for once, and I repeat that, not for once have I gone to him to say, oh, we are doing this many church planting. We are doing this and that. Because I'm not working for him. The records are there. Praise God. I'm working for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then you are to do something in the church where he's taking until the pastor says, thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. If the pastor has not said that, they don't appreciate me. Excuse me. If you want earthly appreciation, you will get it. But you miss the heavenly appreciation. And because they didn't give you position or title, you say, I'm not going to contribute. Whether you contribute or not, take up with those who have been with me. I tell them, whether you give or not, God will do his work. You giving is just an opportunity for you to be blessed. If you don't give, you deprive yourself of that opportunity. I'm not going to get mad with you. There are people that come to church, they don't pay their tithe and offering. I don't fight them. With them, not, you know, many years back, when we were to buy our property, the first church uh, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, um, and then I began to talk with the people. There is a particular brother and his family. They felt I was talking about money too much. You know what they did? They packed their loaf, they left. They stopped coming to the church. So they don't give money. We bought the property. Somebody said, we bought the property. After we bought the property, then they came back to church. <laughs> Somebody say, amen. They are still in the church here today. Amen. There are people like that. Listen to me. Whether you give or not, Upon this rock have built my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. For he has given unto us all that pertains to life and godliness. You better give so that you can be blessed. Because giving is sowing a seed. That's when you are building with Christ. But before you give, the first sense, the first thing you give is what? Your life. To give your life. Otherwise, any and every other thing you give is a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste. You know, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, make serving God your priority. Some of you will deliberately go and pick up a job on a Sunday because you need extra money and you don't understand that it's a, it is a blessing of the Lord that make it rich and yet without adding sorrow. Sorrow. You get all the money, you get all the pain. You get all the money, you get all the sicknesses. You get all the money, and by the way, as they are, they are giving you the money, Uncle Sam is already putting nine to cut it for you. Amen? You know, there is one of our pastors, he wasn't a pastor that time, he was just a brother when I nearly came to Washington. He was doing like three jobs, uh, go from one to another, and coming to church, the time was not there. And it was struggling and laboring and laboring. Praise God. And uh, one day I was talking, encouraging people about giving. And he came to me after service when they said, Pastor, you know, uh, you know, I don't know why people are not giving to God. He said, when I come to church and it is time for giving, I put my hand in my pocket and everything in my pocket, I put in the offering bag. And the Lord said, he's a liar. Amen. And I said, brother, what did you just say? Everything in your pocket. Right? Don't you know how much you put in that pocket before you left home? You put $1.50 there. And you put and you take the whole of $1.50. Praise God. If you have been around for a while, you must have had him. He gave his testimony. 
Because God dealt with him. Amen. He was suffering with all those things. All those things. He couldn't, ends couldn't meet. And one day I went to visit him. And you know, uh, when I'm coming to your house, how many days notice do I give? <laughs> Praise God. So if you are new in the church, amen. If I know your house, exp expect a guest. And maybe I should say expect a miracle. Praise the Lord. So I got to his house. I didn't tell him I was coming. It was Sunday evening. And then I knocked the door. And then he rushed to the door. Who is that? And the, hey, pastor. <laughs> Praise God. And there was no light. No money to pay electricity bill. With the three jobs. And said, well, Pastor, I'm very sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, no problem. Uh, to cut a long story short, he explained his situation. Uh, he said he's doing the three jobs because the wife had an issue with the certificate. And uh, he want, the wife could only work at New York. and wanting the wife to go to New York to work. And uh, the wife said, no, I'm not going to leave my husband and children and go to New York because of money. Uh, so, Pastor, please, what do we do? Now, do you tell the wife? Leave your husband and wife, I mean, and children, go to New York, and then by the time she comes back, somebody else has taken over the husband. Or the children have, or you say, don't go to New York, stay here, and the man should continue doing three jobs. Which, what's your counsel? Pastor. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I didn't respond to either the wife going to New York or staying here to work. Since the problem is she cannot work because of a problem in Washington, D.C., Maryland, I mean, I'm Virginia, I said, uh, where is the license? She said it's in the house, so they tried to get light. She went inside, she brought the license, I said, give it to me, I collected it. And I said, I didn't even close my eyes, I said, what I said, certificate or license, I said, I command you in the name of Jesus, Go and walk. Not a long prayer. And I gave it back to her. Praise God. Since then, she's been walking and walking. The same people that rejected her, they accepted her. This is where I'm going. The man that was doing three jobs with no time for God and couldn't make ends meet, right now does only one job. And it's more blessed than ever before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's a wonderful God. When you serve God, he blesses you. He keeps you. He protects you. He preserves you. He prospers you. That is the kind of God we are serving. And that is why I really want you to join me to serve this God. Amen? Don't play game with God. Don't play game with God. He's loving. He will not allow you to suffer. Are you with me? So create time for him. And he will create time for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, can you imagine the, 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 the man called Paul of Tassos? What God made out of him. Peter the fisherman. What God made out of him. You know, Peter thought uh, the way of life is fishing. And Jesus got there and said, Peter, Yes, you've been doing this all your life, but the time has come now that you become fishers of men. And God wants to use somebody here who is ready to be used of God. Amen. I love your faces. Amen. It's, it's, your faces are radiant. The glory of God is upon you. But come closer to God. Come closer to God. Come closer to God. The God of holiness, the God of righteousness, the God of purity, the God of power, the God of love, the God of prosperity. Come closer to God. Can I give you a little testimony? Amen. Story, story. Many years back, because of Christ, not because of work, I mean, not because of position or anything, because of Christ. Because of the word of God, just a new person, a new convert, I had the opportunity to go to university in another 
stay. But because I was in Lagos and I was enjoying the Bible study, and I said to myself, you know, deeper life is not this everywhere back then. Uh, I said to myself, if I leave Lagos where I was based, I will miss the Bible study. And this is going to affect my life. And because of 